morning, everybody. Enter the stars. Welcome to the show. Well, before we get into today's show, things are moving along uh, more rapidly than even I expected. I know there are rumors, and there possibly were Queen Latifah at the building, but the one leading the charge was a known, well-established, and popular Q channel. This Jake guy, as we're going to call him. So, there is no mudding the waters with this. These, This is the person that led the charge, and people followed suit. He now has become the face of what happened. I mean, unless you want to say that he was a plant of some kind, but then shame on the people who followed this person and got his channel so popular. But say what you want. This is what is happening. And now the takedowns begin. This was the whole purpose of this. So, Mr. T is now floundering, looking for a place to upload his tweets, which of course is all just theatrics and smoke and mirrors. He's the president. If he wanted to, he could shut all this down with the swipe of a pen, an executive order, but he won't. And it's funny, they say that he's looking for a place to upload his thoughts and tweets and whatever because he's been removed off of all these platforms. But now, all he really would have to do is go to a platform like Gab. Wasn't Gab designed exactly for this? But instead they mention Parler, which of course is on the chopping block as well. And they list all of the different social media platforms, some of which we thought were supposed to be for free speech. And they're all just caving in. And this will mark the beginning of the total annihilation of anybody who speaks out against the powers that be. This is what this whole thing was designed to do. Was to draw everyone out and go for one last final sweep. So that they could solidify their world order. So that's the update on what's going on with that. Now we're going to talk about democracy. This was the World's Fair and it was dubbed the World of Tomorrow. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. And it's chilling because it's happening right now. Now let's go into Google Earth. I promised you guys we would do that today. And these are the fairgrounds for the 1939 World's Fair that was dubbed the World of Tomorrow. And as you can see here, it is aligned to 66 degrees. Now let's fix this up here. We're going to pull out the measurement tool. Anyone can do this in Google Earth. Google Earth is a free program. And it's got these tools. Here's the tool here, and you can simply place the tool on one end and pull it to the other, line it up, and this is the original footprint of the fairgrounds. And as you can see, the footprint aligns to 66 degrees on the money. Now, what is the importance of 66 degrees? Well, of course. Trump's penthouse is on the 66th floor and in very pl close proximity to the 1939 World's Fairgrounds is the area of Caron. Here it is right here. And that is literally yards from the, fair the fairgrounds here. And just yards away from that is where Trump grew up, Jamaica Estates, right here. So all of this is in close proximity. Here is the borough of Queens, Queens County, I guess you call it. And there's Trump, Jamaica Estates. So you see the alignment here. Now why are we still talking about Trump? When he's probably going out of office. Well. Because he was the one. 
who made the venom. Biden will issue the bite. This is what it was all designed to do from the beginning of time or beginning of the country, the founding of this country. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. But here you see the, the close proximity. You've got C-O-R-O-N-A. You've got the world's perisphere and the needle. And we're going to talk about those objects, which were the centerpieces for the fair. And then you've got the Queens and Jamaica states all right here. Now, this is Flushing Meadows. And it is symbolic of something. It's got the phallic imagery. And we're going to go over that in a second here. And it was built right into the World's Fair design. Because that's what this is all about. The envenomation of the serpent. Now, let's keep going with this. Because Trump's father commissioned this billboard. And it was raised up during the world's fair and these two objects this is called the trilon and this is called the perisphere and they were the the centerpieces you can see here in this billboard the home of tomorrow 6,000 people live in Trump homes and this was and look at it's even got the steps on each side, which is the seat of Satan. Let me look that up for you guys. Here it is right here. This exists in Germany. And as you can see, it's got the design of these steps going up, right? And this is known as the seat of Satan. Let me see. I think it goes by another name as well. Perg the Pergamon. Pergamum. And Obama had the very same steps for his inauguration. Let's see if we can pull up image images of that. I think it was the inauguration speech. Or was it a campaign speech? I can't remember. But you guys remember. Because we covered all this. Did we not? So let's keep going with this. Because this is crazy. So. This is real. There's only one documented place. And that is in the Queen's Chronicle. Where you can find this image. Of the Trump family. Advertising on this billboard. For, through the World's Fair. Now, why is this important? Well, we're going to get into some of the symbolism behind the ball and needle. Now, let's go back to Flushing Meadows in Google Earth. This is it here. And let's do a zoom in of this. So you can see exactly what we're looking at as we talk about Flushing Meadows. Now, Flushing Meadows was an ash heap. And it stunk. And there you see the symbolism. And we had the perisphere or the uh, trilon and perisphere. That's T and P, which is a lot like toilet paper. Flushing the toilet, toilet paper, the stench. Flushing the toilet on humanity. All this verbal symbolism. And here was the clincher. And this is what this made me decide to do an actual show on this. Is that. This is the trilon here. It is the needle. The perisphere is the ball. Well. Just a few decades after the World's Fair, a brand of hypodermic needle was named Trilon. So now we have confirmation that Trilon meant needle all along. Now, 
I believe that back then, the hypo needle was erected to promote the coming polio VC of the 1940s, just five years after the fair. Let's take, like, let's take a look at some of the history of this. Here is the wiki article for the Trilon and Perisphere. And you can see here that here is the hypo needle, the trilon, here is the ball, and this almost appears to be a serpent wrapping around the egg. See this coming out here and around? Now watch this. This comes full circle to all of the research that we've been doing on this channel. So it's very important to watch every single video. This is the symbol of the serpent. And what he wants to do to the woman, to the womb, to the egg. He wants to mingle himself with the seed of men. Just like it says in the book of Daniel. Now let's get back to some of the, more, the details on this. Here's some vintage images of the Trilon and Perisphere. The serpent using the needle to inject the woman. Now, how does this fit into polio? Well, let's look. Here's the trademark for the Trilon needle. As you could see, it started in 1966 is when it was registered. In fact, on 6, almost 6666, uh, it was on 67. Or 7 6, I don't know the format of this date here, but that's creepy because the Trilon and Perisphere World's Fair is aligned to 66 degrees as we just showed you in Google Earth. This was just a few decades after the World's Fair. Here is the side by side, and I put links to all this in the pinned comment already, so you'll have this information in case you need to show people. But this whole needle thing and injecting things into people goes back a very long time, and it links directly into the Trump family and where he's from. This is why so much money was given to the pharmaceutical companies. This is why War Speed was commissioned and given almost a trillion dollars. This is why. Mr. T was helping uh, invest money into the pharma companies in Puerto Rico. There's some kind of long-standing relationship that we all missed. And here we are now. Trilon. You can't make this up. Now let's get into some of the development of the VC. For polio and look at the history of this now just five years before the fair is actually four years a scientist ground up monkey spinal cord and then Killed it with formaldehyde. Is all this starting to sound familiar? Remember all of the Planet of the Apes stuff that we did? Remember we looked at the formaldehyde? And the ingredients of some of this stuff? And what he did is he tested this. And tried to cure polio. Many children. He gave it to 3,000 children. This was four years before this World's Fair. Many developed allergic reactions. But none of them got antibodies to polio. So this failed. But then in 1939. Look what happened here. Albert Sabin used an experiment. 
in which he put vitamin C into the upper respiratory system. And I'm going to be specific here. This is right out of Wikipedia. And I, you know, we, we use Wikipedia too because Wikipedia basically uh, uses Encyclopedia Britannica and what the fact checkers use to prove things. So this cannot be debunked. So let's keep going with this. Found that monkeys on a scorbutic diet died of spontaneous acute infections, chiefly pneumonia, while their mates receiving an adequate diet remained well. Then he found that with an infection of maximum severity induced by flooding the na nasal portal of entry with large amounts of virus, that vitamin C administration fails to exert any demonstrable influence on the course of the disease, but with less forceful method of droplet installation, the picture of the disease in the control animals becomes so variable that the results cannot be easily interpreted. But the available data suggests that vitamin C treatment may be a factor in converting attacks on into an altogether non-paralytic infection. So it takes away the paralysis aspect of polio. In 1979, Salo and Cliver inactivated polio virus type 1 by sodium bisulfate and ascorbic acid in an experiment. The ascorbic acid, I believe, is the vitamin C. So, who won the contest? Obviously, the pharmaceutical companies, not the vitamin C. Now, let's go back into Google Earth. Here are the fairgrounds, and they are still orientated to the same direction. This is it right here. I've got some vintage images of this, so you can see this side by side. I wanted to be very specific with this show. Here you see it right here. Here you see the freeway here. This is a vintage image of it. Here you see the freeway interchange. Let's make that bigger. And here you see the orientation of the fairgrounds. And let's go back into Google Earth side by side. Here you see the freeway interchange and the fairgrounds, the same thing. Now, let's get back into the history of this because it goes even deeper. Because the perisphere, the ball, was replaced by the unisphere. This is it right here. And down to this day, this unisphere is in Flushing Meadows, the former World Fairgrounds site. Now, the original perisphere, the big ball, was 180 meters in diameter, and the new unisphere is 120 feet in diameter. Now, if feet were meters, the unisphere would be 0.666% of the size of the perisphere. But if we do the straight conversion, this is one fifth of the size of the perisphere. Again, this is the theme of the two becoming one. Now, the perisphere, I'm sorry, the unisphere, the new one, is tilted, of course, at 23.5 degrees, just like the Earth, what they tell us the Earth is. And reverse math gives us 66.5 degrees is what this is really, quote-unquote, tilted at. So, 66.5, there's your number 66 again, which confirms this alignment that we just measured in Google Earth. Now, here is the unisphere here. Let's see if we can get it in 3D. Let's close this.
Turn on 3D buildings here so you can see this. Here it is. Now these orbiting rings around here are satellites. They place three of them around the Unisphere. So, this was 81 years ago. 81 years. Well, there's like some... One, two, three, four. How many of those are there? It's probably... Let's count this fountain here. This is a fountain. I hadn't counted this yet. It's got these... Uh, so there's two in each one. That's four. Let's see here. I'll be back in the chat in a minute, you guys. I just want to get through this show because... Okay, let's count these. Four... Wait, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 48, 48. I think there's 48 total. I could be mistaken. Or we can just count these sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's almost like this is a clock. And then there's 48 total spines. The Unisphere, the two becoming one 81 years ago. Now, we all know that what we're, what we're really looking at here, and I believe what we're looking at is a serpent injecting the venom into the woman, the seed of the woman. We're going to look at some murals next from the World's Fair of 1939, and we're going to decode those murals, and you're going to be blown away. Let's look at uh, this short video from the World's Fair. Let me put my headphones in. This is a two-minute video that I found talking about the utopia of tomorrow and what they were really looking to do here. There's a star in the wind that's growing and growing. I tell you the wind is blowing the past away. For so, they're ready. The winds are blowing. The pulse of the world is beating and beating. The pulse of the world is beating and beating. Now, this is just basically one particular person's um, assembly of different slides and things. So, this isn't the official world order theme. But still, actually, this is from the New York Public Library. So, this is, this is NWO propaganda. And every one man I'm meeting to say. There's the perisphere, and as you can see, it looks as though the serpent is wrapping around the egg. Where the rising tide comes from far and wide, marching side by side on our way. So this is a remake because obviously there was no footage from inside the perisphere, inside the ball, but in the center of it was created a utopia so they did this remake of it recreation i guess you call it here are grass and trees and at the center of course is the ut is the sun worship apollyon this is stonehenge is what you're looking at right here as well as stone and steel Not stone and steel stone and steel stonehenge a dream city but a symbol of life. As and now I want you to see this for what it is. 13 separate groups of five. Why 13? Well, five and eight is 13. Those are, again, Trump's numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13 groups of 5 surrounding the Stonehenge Utopia City in the center. So what we're really looking at here is the hypodermic needle and the serpent wrapped around the egg, the Orphic egg. Let's keep going with this video here. ...is lived by the man of tomorrow. No longer a planless jumble of slum and grime and smoke, but town and country joined for work and play in sunlight and good air. And as you can see, looking at it from this angle, you can almost make out a heart. At the center are government, business and amusement, well out beyond our farm, workshop, mine, and mill. This is the world they want for us. Complete and total domination and control. Everybody living in the grid, in a utopia. No more living in the country. This is why we have to exercise our right to do that now. Instead of waiting until it's not possible anymore. Dependent on each other. Dependent on each other. As day fades into night, each man seeks home. For here are children, comforts, neighbors, recreation. As man helps man, so nation leans on nation. See the heart here? This is the false love. You can make out the heart right here. Let me see if I can draw it in for you guys. Let's go to web paint. Now we're going to do some more drawing on this show. I like to draw and show you guys what's going on. I think this one will do it. Here you can make out the heart. Be careful. When you see people using the heart all the time. Could be something else they're up to. So there it is right there. Let's keep watching this. United by a thousand roads of commerce, art, and human aspiration. A bare brain and brawn, faith and courage, are linked in high endeavor as men march on toward unity. So this was at the center of that ball that you saw when you walked in. This was what was at the center in 1939 at the World's Fair. And peace. Listen. From office, farm, and factory, they come with joyous song. So, very creepy stuff. This was going on all the way back then. Now, here's where things go off the rails. Because this mural was on the communications building at the fair. And this is creepy because I believe that what you're looking at is the book burning and the foreshadowing of the World Wide Web, which would be born out of the telegraph and phone era. So, they start here with this very offensive image of Native Americans. And they're using smoke signals here, which was the first form of communication so out of the sacrifice in all of the blood in the ground, they're bragging about stealing this knowledge and technology, the smoke signals. And you see how the books are all used as the fire, as fuel for the fire. Here you see the books here, newspaper and books, fuel for the fire, books over here, burning and I couldn't even believe this when I found this. Then the smoke signals go up. They become electrical signals. And here you see the secret. It is musical notes and frequencies. Musical notes become the signal. It's a song. But it's the devil's song. It's the counterfeit song of communication. 
He then converts that into electric signals, as you see right here, the lightning bolts. And then, of course, you see electrical wires here. And it encompasses the world. The giants. The giants holding up the world. You see this? The giant man. So, this mural in and of itself was loaded and it appears to me to predict the World Wide Web all the way back in 1939. They already knew this. They'll burn the books. And you can see basically what you're looking at is an Ouroboros. You're seeing a progression from the Native Americans spinning around and around to the final result, the World Wide Web. So this is truly a futuristic scene. Here's another mural that appeared at the 1939 World's Fair, confirming what we were talking about. Musical notes. They call it communication of thought. Interesting, right? And there you see the globe. Worldwide communications. You guys, they use some of the very same lines in avenues and portals of communication that they did have to, all the way back to the beginning of time. All the way back to the beginning of the telegraph era, I should say. The, the same lines of communication are used. They're just replaced with new material. Now, here is a map of the World's Fair. And as you can see, here's Flushing Meadows. Let's zoom this in a bit. This is a vintage uh, map from the era. And clearly, what I see here is the Baphomet. This becomes the skull. Let me outline this for you so you can see this. There's more to this as well, we'll get into. But here you have one, two, and the final. So this is the five pointed inverted pentagram right here at the center of the World's Fair. There's also more going on here. And for those of you with eyes to see, you already see what we're looking at. The phallic imagery. Let me draw it out for you. As soon as I get this tool working, let's pull this down here. Make this a little bit bigger there. And okay. So, here we go. So, this is obvious phallic imagery here. And we'll leave it at that. So, let's keep going with this. Because this is huge. Now, remember... These, this area is the very place where Trump began his life and bloodlines going back to the Trump family for several generations. Look at, here's at the top is government. They will rule over this. Now, there's another mural here I want to show you. This is called the Rock Kent Mural. And I believe I also pinned this in the comment section as well. And look at this. Can you see the pyramid in all seeing eye? You've got man and woman intertwined. And of course, this is the apotheosis, right? Government leading at the top. This is in the apotheosis of George Washington in the rotunda. Remember, the rotunda of government. 
And look at this. You've got the all-seeing eye in the palm. This is probably the mark that they want to put in your hand. Right? The right hand. And then it illuminates into the shape of a pyramid going down over the people. They want to rule in a utopia. What's over here on this side? Of course, they've got their portals, right? Look at all the research we did on arches and portals. This is an Arc de Triumph right here. Arc de Trump. Arc de Trump. Here's the images right here. You can't make this up. In the very area where his family is from, there's much more to what he was able to achieve in this presidency than anyone has discovered to this point. Here it is right here. Wow. He made the venom. Biden will administer the bite. What is going on in this scene? Wow, look at this. It's dark. This guy's playing an instrument. Ooh, there's another py a pyramid there. What the heck? Pyramid inside of a circle. You guys are really good at imagery. So maybe you can help us out with what that might mean. What's this down here? Plows. Oh, so this is basically history. The wagons, the plows, all at the very, very bottom. And then raising up to a utopia out of the ashes of the pioneer days. That's what I see here. You've got industry. More arches in the form of these tubes, right? So this is inner industry, electricity. See? So you've almost got a light and a dark side. Definitely a light and a dark side. These are the maybe the people that don't want to participate. We become homeless and using trash fire to stay warm. And they're trying to predict us as people that are in the way of progress, right? And then over here, this is industry. And these people are dancing it up and happy. And they're worshipping. They're worshipping the pyramid. Whoa. And then he's got his finger on the electricity. Because this is the mechanism by which they control the people. Look at that. See, there was a lot going on in 1939. They already knew the plan. And this is our future. It's happening right now. Instead of electricity, it's the World Wide Web. And look what they're doing as we started the show. What did we start the show with? Showing you how they're shutting down all free thought. All those who want to stand in the way of progress. They're simply silencing your voice. And hindsight really is 2020. Hindsight really is 2020. This is a news article talking about the World's Fair, except this was way back in 2010. And they were talking about hindsight being 2020. Look at the date on the article, March 11th, 31133. Wow. Whoa. Something told me to type in Trump. This was from 2010, you guys. Why else trumpet? What? Right there. This is gold. This is a 2010 article. The world of tomorrow was overwhelmingly suburban.
Why else trumpet the drugstore of tomorrow? With its streamlined soda fountain of the future. After a decade of depression, America yearned for the placid and peaceful promise of suburbia. Right there, in your face. They already knew he was going to become president. They already knew the drugstore of tomorrow. And so, the venomous snake fangs inspire. Uh oh. What happened there? This was working fine before. The venomous snake fangs inspire the new microneedle drug delivery system. This micro patch. Here it is right here, inspired by the serpent himself. Now, what are my final thoughts on what all this means? Well, the ball and needle. What is it really when we really think about what the ball and needle is? What is it? Well, there's another ball and needle. You ready for this? There are actually several balls and needles around America. This, of course, was the very place where everything just went down in the final burst of power to take away our voices. The final Trump to take away our voices was spawned out of what happened on 1-6-21. What is the ball and needle? Well, we have another needle, do we not? It is the obelisk, the Washington Monument. This is the Washington Monument, and there is an alignment. Let's pull out the measuring tool. 88 degrees. Now we'd covered this before. The 88 degree alignment. Between the needle and ball, the Washington Monument and the rotunda of the Capitol. The rotunda is a ball, you guys. The rotunda is a ball. And this alignment proves what the needle and ball is. 88 represents the serpent. Let's fix this so you guys can see this exactly. I want to mess this up. Go back here. There it is. The serpent is infecting the seed of the woman, and that's what this rotunda and needle really represent. Now the same 88 degrees exists at the Vatican. It also has a ball and needle, just like the World's Fair, all the way across the pond. And guess what this is aligned to? The same 88 degrees. The ball and needle. Now, you can't make this up. Some will try. Let's turn the 3D off on this. But at the end of the day, you can't fudge this. It is what it is. 
88 degrees. What this signifies is in, in a secret pact between the Vatican and the world government and the government of America. Always has been, always will be. And the final meaning behind the needle and ball is the piercing of humanity with the needle, which is happening right now. And that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Now, there's no need for fear if you're saved by the blood of the Lamb. You don't get pierced. And if you do, the great healer, Jesus Christ, is the only healer that you need. Look at this. This is just nuts. 88 degrees. Now, you can do these um, alignments yourself in Google Earth. If you don't believe me, go right in there. Measure it yourself. This is one of the greatest discoveries we made on this channel about the 88 degrees. We found other places aligned to 88 degrees as well. What is 88 degrees? What does 88 mean? 88 is time and space. That's what it is. It's the sun and the moon following the analema, the figure eight in the sky. And I believe that, now this is just a theory, I don't know this to be true, but maybe the way we see the sun and the moon and the sky, the, you know, all these things, is tainted by the enemy who rules this world. Somehow maybe the reflection of how we see it and how it persists in our reality, the, the, the uh, perception of time, let's call it, because we used to be eternal beings under God, but now our perception of time has been altered. And maybe that's what the 88 is, the altering of the perception of time. And that's why it appears that the moon and sun follow the figure eight in the sky. Let me show you the analema just to round out this show. So I want this to be a complete body of work here because this is very, very important. Analema, sun and moon. So you understand what the number 88 means. It's time and space. Here is the analema. I'm looking for the side by side because they have it where you, they show you the sun and the moon following the same path. It's an alteration in our perception of time. Here it is. Here's the, here's the image. There's a lunar analema and a solar analema. See that? Lunar and solar and they both Follow the figure eight. So together, they make the number 88. And this is why they like to use the number 88 when they talk about time travel. Let's close this up. This is why they like to use the number 88 when they talk about time travel. Because it's time and space, sun and moon. Our time clock measured by the rising and setting sun and the moon phases. Calendars. This is all about calendars. So now you see very clearly that the World Fair of 1939 came full circle and is happening right now. Born out of the polio VC. And now we here we are with the CV VC. To me, the, the connection is undeniable. So hopefully this was a helpful show. Um, let's go into the chat just for a little bit. Um, typewriter said complicated stuff. Well, I recommend you definitely have to give this show full attention. So if you've been in the chat, you want to watch this show again, start to finish with your soul mind focused on the chat uh, or on the, the actual show. Okay. Because it's actually pretty simple. It's actually pretty simple. And if you need to, uh, put the video on 1.25 speed or 1.5 speed, because sometimes I can get um, trying to focus on a thought or I'm doing the technical part of these shows that I put together, which is navigating and um, remembering what tab I was on and remembering what I was going to say. And so sometimes there are dead spots and spaces. So if you put the video on a faster speed, then it can be more cohesive and come together a little bit better. 
Okay, so that's what I recommend. This is all actually pretty simple. It shows you the theme. It shows you the theme from the beginning, what they've always wanted to do to humanity to create their utopia. Notice the word utopia was used this year specifically in the remake of the original utopia from Britain in which they mentioned the Janus. They mentioned the Monsanto and the GMO corn. They mentioned sterilization. They mentioned all of that in that utopia series. This is the goal, you guys. This is the goal. And Mr. T fell right into the trap. Whether you want to believe it or not, he created the venom. The venom is here. We can't go back from this. And yeah, a lot of people are refusing it, but how long do you think that's going to take? And even if they refuse it, he bankrupted us by spending a trillion dollars on it. On something that not 80% of nurses in some areas won't even take. So, this was all planned. This is why I was really hard on Trump about nine months ago when he started this whole warp speed. Because I was like, you guys, we can't let him make this. Are we all asleep? And people kept saying, well, you have a choice. You don't have to. That doesn't matter. The money being spent on it. And... The other, the people that you love that will be affected by this is all that matters. It doesn't matter if you decide to take it or not. What about your mother, your brothers, your sisters, your father, your children? What if one day they're forced to, to go back to school? And that's exactly what happened. They're, we are on the precipice, the verge. In fact, the colleges are already requiring it. And one day your children will, well, some people, well, I don't have children, so I don't have to worry. Well, what about everyone else that does? What about everyone else that does? Have we forgotten? Our humanity? So, that's the whole thing. That's the whole story. I don't know how else to put it. Okay, let's go into the chat. Jesus Christ is the true vine. Absolutely, 100%. We should have never, we should have stopped it when we had the chance. All that had to happen right there was the Q community who, I told you guys, they're running cover for, for Mr. T. They're running cover for him. They're not calling him out on his mistakes. Why are they letting him make this? If they would have stood up and the people on the right who support him would have stood up and said, no, Mr. T, don't do this. We don't want this. But do you see how the right-left paradigm works? Oh, if the if the left's opposing him, if the left's opposing him, then it, then he must be good. It must be good. You gotta step outside of that. That's how they work us. It's how they play us. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I'm just really uh, passionate about this uh, because literally, people's lives are on the line. Literally, literally. And I feel like if I can just get through to a few people. And help them understand what we just what just happened to us. And as we speak, they are going through and deplatforming. I don't know if we'll be here tomorrow, to be honest with you. Even though we are outside the right-left paradigm, I still don't know if we'll be here tomorrow. Because they're they are going against people who anyone who's going against their agenda and their plan, which Trump was part of. He helped build the, the venom. So you, you, he can't un divorce himself from that fact. That is a fact. I, I still have people that are supporters of Mr. T telling me he didn't do it. The pharmaceutical companies did it. They forgot all about warp speed already. It's like their mind got wiped. That was the initiative born out of his very mouth. I got to look back and look at the day that he announced warp speed and see if there's any symbolism behind that date what that might have meant or maybe we can look at the date between warp speeds announcement and the very first day that they administered the vc which was on the eclipse of december 14th which was of course was on the anniversary of handy sook everybody forgot that our memories are so short they're so short so Yeah, he just ran with the money. I had someone tell me today, I'm unsubscribing. That money he got from those emails has 
It's uh that goes to the Republican National Committee. I'm unsubscribing. No, it doesn't. 75% of that, and I showed the person the article, went to uh, Mr. T's defense campaign. And then the way that he worded it, he can use that money for other things too. Only 25% went to the RNC. Then someone else came on and said, oh, those emails, those aren't from him. Those are from the campaign. He didn't have anything to do with those emails. Wrong again. Those emails came directly from him. I was getting emails from Melania, getting emails from his sons, getting emails from him. That comes out of him. He did that. It amazes me how some people say, oh, he's playing 5D chess and he's such an intelligent man. But then when things like the logo for Warp Speed, they try to say he didn't see that. He didn't know someone else made that for him. No, that's not the way it works. This was his signature initiative. This is what he liked to brag about, that we brought this thing to market in nine months. Of course he saw the logo. In fact, because of the ego and attention to detail that he loves to brag about, right? About his penthouse and his Mar-a-Lago, all the detail. I can't imagine he didn't look at that logo, knowing that that would be the face of his most famous initiative that he likes to brag about and his famous accomplishment. Of course he saw the Reiki logo hidden inside the seal for Warp Speed. Of course he saw it. He probably put it there himself. So you can't have it both ways. Either, either he's super intelligent and he knows every bit, single bit of symbolism and can play 5D chess or he doesn't. So now we're stuck with the bite, Biden, and make no mistake, you know, it's funny because the media is kind of holding back. Of course, they're going to be very careful how they report anything that Biden does. So we've got to read between the lines because we know what the agenda is. We know that the bite is coming, but how are they going to do it? How are they going to do it? And this isn't over yet. We're just beginning. We're just getting started. It, things are going to go off the rails with, with Biden, guarantee you. And we'll be here to report on it and read between the lines and show you guys what's going on. But the point is, is both sides are working together. They're acting like they're not. The left is pretending to oppose Trump and hate him and all this. But in actuality, they're all working together. There's a master plan. There's a master puppet strings working on the background. And all they care about at the top is maintaining all of their money building their wealth so that their children's children can be rich too and rule the world. That's all that matters to these people on both sides of the aisle. All right. So, what else do we have here? All right, I'm going to end the show here. I love each and every one of you. Be saved today. If, if, Anything in what we cover today, anything reaches your heart and helps you realize the great and true right-left paradigm, which is good versus evil, God versus Satan. If you finally have come to that realization and realize that the ruler of this world is the one pulling the puppet strings, he's in control of this world. That's why he was able to offer Jesus the kingdoms of the world because they were under Satan's control. All of their kings and presidents included. If you finally come to that realization that we've all been manipulated, then now is the time to give your life to Christ. And all it takes is a thought in your head of just cracking the door open and saying, you know what? Maybe, God, just maybe, this is true and real. And when you crack your heart open, he will come in. He just needs your submission. He needs you to humble yourself. That's all. That's it. That's how it starts. The rest is a process. It's a process of building you up, revealing truth to you, speaking to you in the still small voice. It's not about... 
uh, becoming a fanatic and opening your Bible every single day and have a timer next to you with, you know, how many verses you read. And it's not all that legalistic crap. It's not about going to a church five times a week. It's not about any of that. It's about a relationship with him. We have enough tools where you can go online and make this simple. You can do searches in the Bible. And find anything you want. Literally, the world's at your fingertips, for now anyway. And you can find and become closer to him. What do you think that I've been doing for the last eight years, nine years since we've been on YouTube? We're trying to draw closer to him and help other people draw closer to him through these proofs, through this dialogue of what is really happening in our world which all points everyone back to the gospel and points everyone back to Christ. That's what this has all been about, the whole thing. And that's why I always give the glory to the Most High and His Son as many times as I can. And you guys are probably almost getting sick of it. But none of this is possible without Him. This is where we get the abilities that we have and the talent and the, the ability to see all these things. It all comes from Him. Not me. I'm just a vessel. So, I love each and every one of you. Take care.